for both of these players. Chris T and Tequila is going to be our second match again. Not when you when you think about it now, we, we are going to be going to that third match regardless. But this is, I feel like, a treat for all of us Street Fighter fans in general. Yes, 100%. In terms of the players, it will be a mirror match once again. Chris T will definitely relish in this moment to be able to say they've done it on the Street Fight World Championship stage. And again, if he wins this, I believe they'll both be 50 apiece, which means we have to go to that final game. We forced to get the win yeah. from there. I think no matter what, in terms of the point spread, yeah. we're still going to be going to that final game. So that is, that's excellent. Most really, excellent. Really, really. We got ourselves a real match. All right, so Ken is obviously going to be the character on the screen for both of these players. Did you happen to catch Chris Tarian downstairs? I think he was, but I think he was chatting with people more than actively playing here. But I, he's definitely got the right mindset when it comes to situations, high pressure situations like this. I have the utmost faith in him. Tokido has other plans, though, because, again, he wants to make sure his team get the dub as well. Collect those 10 points. Each and every point matters. Man, those eyebrows on this costume are something serious. It's real bushy. All right, here we go. <laughs> Game number one between Chris T and Tokido. Man, nothing to be impressed immediately after knocking on the door. Tokido. There's a fireball at a very dangerous range, and there's that oh. crouching medium punch there. And it, it's similar to using it like loop, right? You use it, try to see if they try and whip punish it, and then catch them again. Trying to react to it afterwards, because people do react late to those. Ooh. There's it. Getting outside that range as well, Chris, Chris Tatarian. I mean, most of the fireballs do the work. Yeah, he's actually mixing up between crouch medium punch, crouch medium kick, fireball as a poke, but obviously we know fireball can be reacted to with the DI in that range, but I don't think Chris wants to risk that at the moment, especially losing his drive gauge as well, or low on drive gauge. Delay jump back there, and it worked out. Sometimes doing delayed throw tech is actually pretty dangerous with the recovery frames. He's less than a drive gauge away, so we're going to see a drive rush cancel into the true block string, burn him out. Yep. Play it safe. That was actually the most optimal and safest route Tokido could do there. OD uppercut, for sure. Yeah. Or even leading up to that with the drive rush uh, from the stand face for the true block show. That's fair. Take away one drive stop completely to burn him out. We're looking at now the spacing between the two. Tokido does find the mark this time with the low medium kick. Right? He's already showing two different looks that you were talking about in the previous games that we've seen him from. Okay. Thought he could get a punish there. That's why he cancelled the five, but wasn't quite sure. Still low on dry gauge here, Tokido. Ah, ready for it. Yeah, gets the anti as well. Keeps him marshaled in the corner too. <laughs> He's Three in a row. Him know. Oh, a little bit of frustration from the side of Chris Tarian as well. Shook his head on that one. Because you're usually not used to use uh, Ken using crouching medium punch, and then you, have you Bro. got the right? Have you got the right counter towards that as well? So right, he's going to go to the counter. Select screen. Take a breather here. But yeah, that's been that's been the big play at the moment. It's been crouching medium punch throwing all the Ken players off today. Okay. Oh, okay, I thought he was going to go use the exact same costume and do something else here, but Tokido has been using costume three. Ten there, so he's having a little chat with Zhao Hai and Mena. Maybe readjust the spacing. If you're, in, if you're a part of the Bandits camp, you have to you have to take a significant note about his normal usage, right? Tokido, again, that crouching medium punch has been so, so hard to even contest against in the corner. How many times have you whiffed it in front of Chris Terry? Three. Three. Three, three times? Yes, three times, something like that. What do you do to counteract that now? Well, he could try to implement his own strategy, but sometimes you can imitate the what, but not the why. Oh, okay. Checked him there with the stand medium kick. Knocks away there. We see in that crouching medium punch. And it actually recovers fairly quick as well, so how do you navigate around that unless you're really fixated on that normal? Cancel there. Oh! Sneaking in a little bit of a reset. That overhead. Ah, you, you heard the, the flash parry. The back dash away from the throw. Gets the, the other side. Punish. Yeah, you got the optimal stuff there with the crouching jab into the crouch fist. Heavy Jinrai. Got himself out in the process here, but Tokido can still hold his grounds. I'm not sure what that button was, but the fireball clipped it. And I like these drive rushes into the fireball to stop his momentum and see if Tokido's trying to check with something else because you'll have to take the regular damage. Oh, so delayed for Chris Tarian. 
Okay, sure you can. He didn't take him straight to the corner here, so he's got other ideas! No and that must have been a mash. That must have been a match because the Crouch Fears come out <laughs> before the story you could say. So I, must have been I will wholeheartedly there. agree with you on that one because I've definitely seen that on my end. I mean, look, objective complete. The story you can came out, that's all I care about. Yeah. And even Tokido was just like, oh, that was pretty good. He had a little bit of a reaction on that. Damn, that was far! He's been pretty consistent with that today overall. We saw a flash kick do that early as well. So, you guys know the ranges. Again, stopping the drive rush approach against Chris T. Tokido now finding the right usage for the winning beam kick. The blocks here from Tokido and the interruption with the light into the Shoryuken conversion. Oof. Looking to take the rounds. He's going to do level two instead. He's going to put him at guess for game here. Strike throw. The throw won't kill though. Will it? Oh, tell a lie. Damn. <laughs> that, that, must was, been like, that was the most genuine <laughs> damn I've like ever damn. heard you say. <laughs> I must have like a pixel of sight off. <laughs> My bad. It wasn't bad at all. Well, I mean, it was good for Tokido regardless. Oh, Whoa. that was so good. He whipped the light before into the medium kick. That was good. A lot of the guys have been doing that at high level there. With the first button. Yeah, you're testing the reaction to yeah, the opponent. Yeah, test for sure. People are still getting used to it, even eight, nine months in. Almost. Oh. Tokido burned himself out to get out of the corner, but what price does he have to pay this? Just dash up twice. No, just dash once, delay a little bit. Delay throw again, by the way. He might have been looking for the level one. <gasps> Look at the chip. But be careful what he spent. You sneaky guy. Chris Tateria throwing out the drive impact for the big W, tying it up. Readjustment of the spacing. Still kept composed. I'm liking the adaptation I've seen from Chris T there. Again, sometimes it's just micro adjustments. They don't need to be macro, just micro. Because I feel in the first game, he wasn't really doing that much wrong, to be honest with you. He just got pretty bamboozled by. Tokido's yeah. crouching medium punch that's, usage. That's, that's the it, biggest really. thing, right? As long as you build up, build up some time for yourself to make that adaptation possible, and you force, you force the awkward situations against your opponent a lot. It's like then, Tokido only uses the crouch and medium punch for the very first game, then he goes back to the yes. original game plan. That's what I've noticed twice now. Oh, Still there you catches go. them crouching. We mentioned that earlier. What happens if you perfect parry that low scenario? Ooh, that was a counter hit. Chris Terrian trying to contest the safe count. Backdash almost got the punish there what he needs though. Yeah, Tokido's backing away. He was looking for the airborne approach. Ooh, again, three for three. Maybe to set that up though. Okay, give him the illusion that he could throw the fireball, but, and he blocks, takes the risk. It's fine, sometimes you need to set precedence. It might have been obvious, but sometimes the obvious choice is the best choice, but it puts Tokido at match point here in this second player match with the best of three. I love these stand-like kick checks from the both of them. Oh. And an immediate standing light punch check from Tokido. But it was off of the driver, so he was looking for the counter poke regardless. Still waiting there, perfect parry. The fireball. Oh, oh the dear. buffered the buffered normal. See, now, Tokido running into that. Is he gonna be frustrated or is he gonna firm it on defense? Because he needs to get out. He's gonna firm it on defense because that was a big mistake. He's gonna throw him again, jammers. Oh right. what? Perfect there, he's out. He's got some speed. Ah, here oh, we go. Back to strategy, the first strategy. Again, what's it gonna be? Strike throw, and he tried to wake up. Good choice there from Chris, so he had to commit. I don't think he was pleased by that, but he had to do something to turn this around. It is a detrimental position. No resources, dehydrated. Shout out to Yipes. He got I through. like that, that was wrong! Even if the one hit's fine. He can't punish that, not You're from not. that range anyway. This is Christy. Could still My God, Tokido, how many times? That was OD Fireball, too. It was. Jeez. It was indeed utilizing the invincibility frames and reacting at the last possible minute before it connected. He was able to do that. And to be fair, he was pretty successful that throughout the day. So well played to Tokido. Commiserations to Chris, because that adaptation was actually pretty fantastic. Well, I've got to say in the Ken Mirror there. Mm -hmm. Brilliant stuff to see. Which means. We go to this potential final match here at SFL World Championships. Takes oh the jacket God. off. He's smiling. You gotta give. You gotta. You gotta go the distance, man. You gotta give me that extra set. If Bandits can secure this W against Bonchan, they have another chance at life. And we'll talk about that in detail after this. Again, we talked about the initial strategy of how Tokido doesn't want to be less susceptible with that low medium kick. He, he's fully aware that Chris Terrian is more than competent enough to, to punish kind of that or be outside of that space. So the crouching medium punch has been the go-to. And you had mentioned it in the previous segments. Indeed. 
And again, it was just how Tokido switches up his strategy via normals. Right, starting off the crouching medium kick, throwing him off, going back to the stable game And you game saw plan. the start up with the low medium kick from Chris Tateri, and that was just rough, man. But the thing is, like, Chris T literally stuck to his game plan. We didn't really see crouching medium punch used in the same way that Tokido was using it. Maybe it's just a button he's not comfortable using, or he has maybe vastly different opinions on how to use the button. But his whiff punish game has been pretty phenomenal today against Sakanoko, against Tokido here. But then there's sometimes where he puts himself as a scenario. It's not even him. Sometimes his opponent puts him in that scenario where he's forced to do something that he's not completely comfortable with. And even though he gets the hit and spends the resources to reset things into neutral, he's at a lack of advantage in the meter department, which is mm -hmm. pretty huge. We saw that earlier. And I think one of the biggest things as well was when he got the low forward into the Tatsu on block by mistake. Having those situations, especially one, at this yeah. late stage in the game, is not good for your mental, man. Yeah, no doubt. You saw Tokido again inching forward to even make that happen. But talking about the last... Tidbits. I, I feel like most of the time Chris Tatarian was playing it rather safe, rather, I want to say like a decent speed. That's the entirety fine. Of the set. Him kind of running out with the drive rushes to see if Tokido would react to him really didn't play out in his favor towards the end of that set. He was still ready for it no matter what. And ate a lot of damage, which allowed him to pretty much be susceptible in these corner situations. I think uh, overall his, his decision-making around the mechanics of drive rush didn't go the way that he yeah, had planned it. There. And I think that's exactly where he struggled the most. Because other than that, I think his neutral game was fine. We also got to remember as well, they were playing super close to the fireballs. And then Tokido was the only one doing the Shoryukens, or the OD Shoryukens there. Chris actually got a heavy one to connect, which only connected once. And that was huge. To even that give him an drive, iota uh, of extra time, right? In burnout, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. no matter how middle school is. We were, at, we're about to see it right now. Because, dude, it was pretty oh, was crazy. Over. But, yeah.